it. Thanks for watching. And today I would like to define a brand new concept, which I like to call a line surface integral. What you may say? Don't worry, I will define it. And it's really all it is. It's a one dimensional generalization of a surface integral. And here's how this came up. So a student of mine asked me the following question. And I thought it was so amazing. I was like, I should make a YouTube video on this. So here's the main problem. In three dimensions, if f, if you have a vector field with three components, then the divergence theorem says the following. It says that the surface integral of f ds equals to the triple integral of the divergence which becomes a triple integral of px plus qy plus rz dx dy dz. So that's just a regular divergence theorem. And here's what my student asked. Suppose we're in two dimensions. So if f equals to pq. Well, in class, I thought that you know the surface integral is a generalization of a line integral. So the 2D variant would be a line integral. And the question is, is there a 2D divergence theorem for that? In other words, if you have a cl 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 closed curve C and it encompasses a region D, is it true or not that the line integral equals to the double integral of the 2D divergence, which would be the double integral over D of Px plus Qy. Unfortunately, in general, this is not true. But then the question is, why is this not true? And what would he have to correct in order to make this true? And for this, let me give you a brief review of surface integrals and line integrals. Because what is a surface integral really? A surface integral, so suppose you have a surface S, magic carpet, a vector field F, the way to get the surface integral is you double integrate over some region D, f dotted with the normal vector. See, if you have some normal vector, let's call it n hat, because it's not necessarily unit normal vector, it becomes f dotted with f n hat du dv. So again, very important. For the surface integral, you have to dot f with some normal vector, some perpendicular vector. And the reason the previous analogy doesn't work for line integrals is because for line integrals, you don't dot with a normal vector. You dot with the direction vector. Because remember, the line integral is defined to be integral of f dotted with r prime of t dt. In other words, if you have a curve c and a vector field f, in this case, you're just dotting it with the direction vector. Whereas, again, for the surface integral, you have to dot it with the normal vector. So, the question is, how do we remedy this? Well, in order to generalize the surface integral to one dimension, all you have to do is to define the 1D surface integral as to be f dotted with the normal vector of c. Because look, c is a curve, it still has a normal vector, because it's called n hat. So the correct definition of the 1D surface integral would be f dotted with n hat over the curve. Okay, so correct. That's what, I, that's what I call a line surface integral. It's just one integral over S of F, let's still say dr, would be defined to be the integral from A to B of F dotted with n hat 
BP. And again, you have your curve C, your vector field F, and your normal vector. Another question is, well, what is n hat? And like, how can we find a formula for this? Fortunately, it's not too bad because we're in basically one dimensions. So, what is n hat? And again, I like to remind you, you have our curve, C again, and then we have our vector field F. Maybe let's point it here. And we do have the direction vector, which I like to call R prime. So R prime of t, if you parameterize the curve as x of t, y of t, R prime is just a vector of derivatives. So x prime of t, y prime of t. And it turns out you can define the normal vector as follows. Essentially what you need, you need a vector that when you dot it with x prime, y prime, you get zero. So if n hat is a, b, we want n hat dotted with r prime of t. We want those two vectors to be zero. So in other words, a x prime of t plus b y prime of t equals to zero. And all we want to do is we want to find A and B. And do a bunch of choices, but one of them, actually a good one, would be let this be Y prime and this be minus X prime. So N hat is Y prime of T and minus X prime of T. And why am I saying this is a good choice? It's good because it sort of respects the orientation. Because suppose C looks like this, this closed circle or ellipse. Then, in this case, you have the um, direction vector. So this is R prime of T. And notice, so in this case, I guess uh, x prime is decreasing. So x prime is negative. Right? And in particular, for the normal vector, we would like uh, x prime to be like the first component. Sorry. Um, yeah. For the normal vector here, notice ideally we would like the second component to be positive, at least in this picture. And well, the choice that makes the second component positive would be minus x prime, because x prime is negative. And therefore, it's really y prime minus x prime of t. Because another choice would be minus y prime and uh, so yeah, minus y prime and x prime. But then the problem is x prime, uh, that would be negative. So it would be the normal vector in the other direction. So that's why this is a good analog. And in fact, that's the one that will make my, the next statement work. That's why I think it's good. Okay, good. We have the normal vector and all we have to do to define a surface integral is just plug in this normal vector here. And let's see what we get. Again, no more geometry, I promise you. So what is the 1D surface integral or the line surface integral? That becomes integral from A to B of F dotted with N hat, okay, dt. Now again, we're in two dimensions, so f is just, has just component p and q. So this becomes p comma q dotted our normal vector, which I want to remind you is just y prime minus x prime d dt. Now just take the dot product. So this becomes a to b uh, p y prime of t minus q x prime of t dt. Let's just rewrite this. This becomes a to b uh, minus q x prime of t plus p y prime of t. 
almost Payam Tabrizian, but with a little prime. And in particular, what this becomes, well, turns out we can write this in terms of the direction vector, which is really neat. This then equals to, to integral from a to b of minus q dot p, sorry, minus q comma p, dotted with x prime of t, y prime of t dt. And the nice thing is, then this thing just becomes an ordinary line integral because, again, this jump is just r, r prime of t. And so, indeed, what this becomes, it then just becomes the line integral of the vector field minus q, comma p, dot dr. In other words, what have we shown? We've shown that this 1D surface integral of f equals to the line integral of this jumbled vector field. So this is what I like to call f perp. So result, the surface integral f dotted with ds it's just the line integral of f perp dotted with dr, where f perp equals to minus q comma p. It's kind of neat. If f is pq, then f perp is indeed orthogonal. It's sort of an orthogonal vector field. Minus q comma p. All right, that's one thing. So now, great, we define the surface integral. And that's just given the surface integral of f. We wrote it as f perp. Now, what if you have the opposite scenario? What if you have, a, you, know, you start with a line integral and you want to write it as a surface integral? So, again, first of all, the way you can write this is surface integral of f p dx plus q dy is the line integral of minus q dx plus p dy. And conversely, what if we ask you to do the line integral in terms of the surface integral? And this will be in a, very important in a second. We get the line integral of p dx plus q dy well, we just want to write this in terms of minus q and p. So uh, if you let p, if you write p as minus q squiggle and q as p squiggle, then this becomes the line integral, in fact, of minus q squiggle dx plus p squiggle dy. Which now you can apply this form to it. And we get that this becomes the surface integral of p squiggle dx plus q squiggle dy. And again, p squiggle is q, q squiggle becomes minus p. So that becomes the surface integral of q dx minus p dy. In other words, we found that the surface integral of p dx plus q dy becomes the line integral of minus q dx plus p dy, and the line integral of p dx plus q dy becomes the surface integral of q dx minus p dy. And you might say, is there an analog of the divergence theorem for one dimension? And indeed there is. It's just Green's theorem. Because what do we get? We get that the surface integral of p dx plus q dy, we just define it to be the line integral of minus q dx plus p dy. And now let's just apply Green. 
to get that this is the double integral over d, quixotic pi m's, which in this case becomes px minus minus qy, and this becomes the double integral over d of px plus qy. So indeed, in this case, we get that the surface integral of f is actually just the double integral of the divergence of f. f dot ds becomes the double integral over d of the divergence of f. If you define it appropriately. And indeed, you can even show that uh, Green's theorem is... Um, Green's theorem is equivalent to that because if you have um, because suppose that you have Green's theorem sorry suppose this divergence theorem holds then you have that the line integral of p dx plus q dy it becomes a surface integral of we've just shown this of q dx minus p dy and now, if you apply the divergence theorem, this becomes the divergence, which becomes qx minus py dx dy, which gives you green. So in fact, the 1D divergence theorem is equivalent to Green's theorem. So in this sense, Stokes' theorem is, oh, not Stokes' theorem, sorry. In this sense, the divergence theorem is a good analog of Green's theorem. Whereas usually you see that Stokes theorem is a good analog of Green's theorem. All right, I hope you like this 1D excursion into line and surface integrals where they both meet. Uh, if you want to see more math and more calculus, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.